So I would like to start with a quick question. Uh, how many of you actually did network performance testing or network security validation? Anyone here in the room? Awesome. What do you think will happen if people will actually not have the tools to do this type of testing? How do you think our everyday life will actually be impacted if we don't have the tools and uh, the mean to validate all the realistic traffic that is happening into a network, all the malicious actions, all the attacks that we see in the wild. They would make their own tools. <laughs> they think they will do their own tools. But um, if, you, if you don't have this type of tools, I think network equipment manufacturers and, and solution providers will have a very difficult time to accelerate their time to market, right? So the technology, to, the technology that we enjoy today, the Netflix, the, the social media, uh, the internet, right? Everything will happen at a much slower pace. So uh, for over 20 years, uh, as a company, we've been really focused on creating uh, traffic generators that recreate different layers in, into the net, right? From, from the router switches to the application layer. So myself, I'm, I'm George Zekiru. Um, I'm, I'm the director of product management for application security. And today um, I will try to speak about a new way to validate in this modern environment where the networks have been transformed from a perimeter based approach to a borderless security approach. Right. So if we look at the, the previous way networks have been architected, we had these big iron next generation firewalls, uh, data leakage prevention devices, and uh, everything was placed at the border with the goal of securing that perimeter. Right? Everything inside was allowed to, um, to communicate freely. Now, when you think from a validation perspective, even this type of technology, even though it was more straightforward to validate because we were able to bring a, a hardware device, generate high volume of traffic that we created, let's say an enterprise level performance or a service provider level performance, or even the level of a continent, the, the traffic that we see on a continent, uh, the technology still struggled, right? And if you look across vendors, right? If I take, uh, leading vendors in the network security space, and you look at the performance per dollar or the security efficacy, then you can still see a huge range of um, differentiation between them. Right? So um, now we are moving from this perimeter-based approach to, to distributed clouds, right? And the distributed clouds have changed two things. Number one, it changed the way that we are securing the networks, the perimeter disappears, and we have a borderless security approach where identity prevails. The second part that happened is the, the, we are moving from the centralized compute approach to, <clears throat> to a cloud-centric approach. And what that may happen, what, what that triggers is how the traffic into the network flows. So in the past, we had traffic flowing from from a branch to the data center. Now with the cloud-centric approach, we have traffic flowing to the, to the cloud, right? So that, that change in the traffic pattern is impacting how the, the WAN, the wide area network is being designed, right? And when we look at this distributed approach, now we see new type of technologies like SASE, SD1 emerging, and um, uh, everything operates in, in a distributed way and requires a completely new approach to testing, right? We cannot just put the, the, the hardware-based test equipment to, uh, to do the validation. So when you look at the challenges for, for testing this type of uh, borderless networks, distributed, dis, distributed cloud networks, um, you can identify three major areas. The first one requires the workload to be distributed, right? So if I have an SD1 or a SASE based solution, now the traffic that is ingested in this type of solutions, first of all, is distributed, right? So uh, when you have the distributed architecture, a big aspect is optimizing the user experience, the quality of experience that, that we want to optimize by deploying this type of point of presence in different regions. And having the ability to 
simulate traffic across all the locations. We can, we can validate geolocation uh, type of performance optimizations, and we can also recre recreate the traffic patterns that we see in, in the real environment. So if you look at, uh, at an example, right? So if we take a practical example, let's say we have a network equipment manufacturer creating um, a VPN router, right? And then you have a cloud service provider that has um, an IPsec gateway in the public cloud, right? That is provided as a service to the company. And then you have the consumer, the enterprise that wants to route traffic between on-premise and the public cloud, right? A situation that can happen there is the enterprise has an issue and now they need to escalate the problem to see is my on-prem router or it is the, the IPsec gateway in the public cloud. How do I troubleshoot this type of issue, right? So having an ability to recreate the traffic over the tunnel and, and, and simulate the traffic on, on both sides is giving you a way to, to isolate where the problem is. Is it on the local router or is it, it is in the public cloud? The, the other part that is happening is the lack of control when we traverse the networks. So if you take SD1, for example, uh, we have the first mile is broadband access, the next mile is the public internet, right? So we, we've replaced the private, um, the private networks and the MPLS with networks that are not always performing in the same way. So as a, as a provider for solutions, you know, like a SASE provider or SD1 provider, we are losing that tight integration between the, the application, the software layer and the hardware layer. So now in, in this environment, it's still very important for us to understand what is happening with the traffic. How can we optimize it when we have a problem in a particular spot, right? How can we redirect the traffic on a different route to, to make sure everything is working fine? And the third part here is the complexity of the dynamic environments. In public clouds, uh, a big aspect is the elasticity, right? Elasticity, and we have a lot of tools to do failovers and high availability by placing workloads in different regions in different clouds. So uh, an important aspect here is to, to have a way to recreate that um, elastic scaling with, with traffic generators that can dynamically scale up and down to validate not only the performance aspect, but also what is happening from a security efficacy, right? So if you have a tool, imagine you have a tool that recreates the application traffic we see um, in, in our networks, and in parallel, you have the ability to insert attack scenarios. Um, now, when I need to focus on the elasticity or the scalability of the network security layer, right? Let's say I have a Palo Alto device in, 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 in the cloud. I create my security rules. So I expect the, the firewalls to scale up as my traffic will increase. How do I make sure that my policy is applying security in a consistent fashion when a new instance of the firewall is happening, right? How do I know that during the time when a new instance is coming up, the, the quality of experience will not suffer. So having the ability to recreate this type of traffic um, uh, in a controlled way is giving us a good, a good approach to, to validate the performance and, and security efficacy. So when you look at the requirements of what does it take to validate in this distributed uh, uh, cloud environment, we identified six, six uh, key attributes, right? The first one is the ability to deploy anywhere. So having a platform that allows you to deploy the traffic generators in different regions, in different clouds, on-prem, uh, it's paramount, right? This, in this way, you have flexibility to recreate the traffic between any point on the planet. The second part is um, the, the technology that is in the middle, right? The load balancers, the proxies, the, the content inspection devices, all that technology needs to remain transparent to the traffic generator, right? We need to interoperate regardless of what you put in between and we test everything as a black box. The third part here is the elasticity that I spoke about. 
having a way to elastically scale the traffic generator to recreate what is happening when you have a workload that is scaling up from maybe on-premise to the public cloud or from public cloud to public cloud, and also to, to recreate uh, failover conditions, right? Where maybe AWS East Coast region goes down and I need to, to move my traffic to a completely different region. So this elasticity is very important. The traffic realism is something that we've learned in the past that is also very important in figuring out what is the performance of content aware devices, deep packet inspection uh, products, right? So when we see, when, when I say here traffic realism, I'm referring to the ability to recreate uh, different applications, the content in those transactions, um, right? So when I browse on the internet, I'm not generating the same, um, traffic across the, all the users. Every user is browsing a different website, is pulling a different content, a different PDF file and so on. The last, the, the, the next one is the identity aspect, right? So when we move towards zero trust, identity plays an important, important role. The, the um, every traffic that, um, is being transmitted needs to be authenticated and authorized before uh, it's being passed through the network. And, and the last part is the distributed aspect, which I've stressed, stressed uh, in, in my previous points. So with Cyperf, with Cyperf, we've tried to address all those aspects and we put together the first cloud native architecture that took the implementation and created a software-based approach to the traffic generation, where we have um, the, a web user interface that allows you to define the test scenarios, to, to define the combination of traffic that you want to inject, select attack scenarios that, that can be inserted in parallel. And uh, the second important part of the architecture is the agent. Right, so uh, the agent is what creates the traffic, what, what is pushing the traffic on the wire. And here, what is very unique is, is the fact that we deliver this agent in a infrastructure agnostic way. So the agent is simply a software application. You can run it on a Linux operating system. You can deploy it as a containerized application. Uh, you can insert it in a Kubernetes environment, public cloud environment as a, as a virtual machine or, or or container. And uh, this is giving us flexibility to really operate in, in any type of environment. The high realism, right, is, is very important in the emulation, as I said. And this is just technology that Keysight had for uh, 15 years, right? It's coming from our breaking point product line. And uh, it's, uh, it's available in, in Cyperf as well. The, the next part is the ability to scale. So our goal is to validate the performance of uh, content aware devices, uh, application delivery devices like load balancers, application layer gateways, and uh, uh, this ability to scale is very important, right? Having a software-based approach, we can scale both horizontally by creating multiple traffic generator points, and we can also scale vertically by uh, by putting more CPU and, and computer resources behind it. If I understand, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. So Cyperf sounds like a kind of white hat DDoS generator. Is that right? Um, it, it is focused on recreating legitimate traffic that you have in the network, so not necessarily a distributed denial of service. Um, and the type of attacks that we simulate are exploits, malware, um, this type of malicious activities. Okay, so it's a bit more like um, CrowdStrike or maybe Metasploit. Yeah, from an attack simulation, you can, you can say it's, it's like Metasploit, except the way we are approaching network security validation is by simulating in a closed loop environment. So you have the attacker side and the victim, and uh, we, can, we can recreate the entire network communication between the two points with the goal of validating how the security efficacy of an intrusion prevention device will be, or how a gateway antivirus will, will be able to protect uh, against this type of traffic. I'm keen to hear more details on how exactly you do that. 
this is an add-on to the ICSA, ICSA, the Ixial chariot stuff where you would be doing performance testing. So is this in addition to performance testing or, yeah. or separate from, or the two different product lines? Yeah, yeah, good question. So Ix chariot has been a, uh, an old product that we had that was more focused on um, stateless transactions, right? So there's nothing stateful in it. And uh, with Cyperf, we focus on that realism. And again, I was test the realism aspect is coming from the ability to create a mix of applications, right? Let's say Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, right? So that is giving me a way to recreate what I have in a production network. Um, in addition to the mix of traffic, the transactions, right? It's like when I do a web transaction, a video call, I send an email, every payload is unique, right? It's like my email will be different than yours. Now, when we deal with content aware, devices, right, that are, are leveraging deep packet inspection, this unique content makes a huge difference between uh, devices, right? Because the technology needs to look deeper and deeper and deeper into the, into the payloads to figure out if that content is malicious or not, okay? So with IX Chariot, you don't get that. With IX Chariot, you get like almost stateful only at the TCP level, and you get pretty much the same transactions over and over. Now with Cyperf, you get this ability to mix applications, to mix uh, unique content in, in the transactions, and in parallel also to simulate attack scenarios, right? Simulating exploits, simulating malware, uh, simulating scenarios where you exfiltrate data from the network. Uh, all, all those things can be possible. And the reason we do it in parallel, right, is because the security efficacy of, of uh, content aware devices it's impacted when you can be, let's say, with a CPU utilization at 80%, and now you have an attack vector trying to get in, some of the tools, not all of them, may just decide to let the, the attack go through because it doesn't have enough resources to process it. So two separate products? Yes, I actually and, and Cypher, two completely separate products. 